If you would like to have imposter syndrome from reading your own CV, you're in the right place. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Sarah, I'm a junior doctor working near London and in this video we're going to be talking about how to present at international conferences as a medical student for free. Now I say international because those are usually the ones that are harder to get into but you can apply these concepts to any type of conference. This framework is also not limited to medical students and you can use it across different specialties and different areas to learn how to get into a conference and presenting in a really professional manner. Just like for research papers I am not an expert but that's not what you need. You need somebody who's been in your position and who's found the simplest way to present at a conference and do this internationally for free or a very reduced price. If you were like me, a medical student looking to present at conferences but having no idea where to start and no clue how to get funding, then this video is for you. It's not rocket science and you just need somebody to show you a step-by-step -step process of how it gets done. And that is the purpose of this video. Just to give you a bit of background, I was able to present at multiple conferences during medical school. The most notable one was an international conference in Taiwan during my final year of medicine. Um, and I was able to go with a group of friends to present our research in Taiwan and the whole trip was fully funded. If you're wondering how on earth I managed to do that, just keep watching. I've broken this video down into seven sections. So the first section will talk about the advantages of presenting in a conference. We'll then talk about what type of research you can present in a conference, how to find your conference and how to fully fund your trip to that conference. I'll then take you through how to submit an abstract and prep your poster. And finally, we'll talk a bit about the actual conference and how to present on the day. So firstly, let's talk a bit about the advantages of presenting at a conference. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably already know that there are many advantages to it, but there are a few that you may not have considered. So so just like anything, one of the best reasons to get involved in presenting at a conference is to experiment. If you've never done it before, who knows, you may absolutely love it and decide that you really want to get more involved in presenting at conferences, presenting talks and getting more involved in research generally. Even if that doesn't happen and it's a one-time experience, it's still something that goes onto your CV and will follow you wherever you go, even if you decide to change careers completely. It's definitely a plus for your professional career and you'll develop lots of skills just by doing this conference. They're also a great opportunity to network and form academic Academic relationships with people from all across the globe depending on how international your conference is. If you follow the steps in the video hopefully you'll be able to travel as well which is also a big plus plus. and honestly if you're a medical student you probably have more time now than you ever will in your career so make the most of that to participate in your first conference. Okay part two is getting a project ready. Now there's so many different types of things that you can present at a conference and I've already made a video about two really simple publication types that you can have so letters to the editor and case studies and case studies are generally a really good thing to present at a conference. If you want to learn how to write a case study, which you can then publish and present at a conference, I'll drop the link to my video down below so you can go ahead and watch that. Another pretty easy type of research that you can present at a conference is an audit or a quality improvement project. Now, a lot of universities have that integrated into their course. And essentially what you're doing is identifying a problem in a hospital, for example, collecting some preliminary data. You then implement a change and you collect another set of data to see if the change that you implemented has actually brought about an improvement. If you would like a video taking you through a step-by-step -step process of how to run an audit, just let me know in the comments down below. Once you've got your research project ready, the next step is to find a conference. Now there are thousands of conferences happening every year, so you need a few factors to help you filter through them. One of the most useful things you can do is narrow it down to specialty specific conferences. It really helps to have your research done so that you know already which area you want to focus on. So let's say if your case study is focused on a neurological condition, you'll be able to look at neurology conferences or conferences that focus on case studies for example. So that's a really good way of narrowing it down. Another filter that you might want to use is location. So depending on the topic and the quality of your research, you might be aiming for a smaller national conference or a bigger international conference. Now international conferences are typically considered as better because they're more prestigious, but bear in mind that they can be harder to get into and are definitely more expensive than local ones. We are going to talk about funding later, but it's something you need to keep in mind, especially if you're thinking of funding it by yourself. Another thing to bear in mind is that some conferences are much easier to get into than others. Now, not all conferences are created equal and you might want to go to the really high quality ones, but especially in the beginning when you're starting off, it doesn't really matter. You just want to get that experience and start getting involved. And if you manage to get into a national or international conference, that's already a really big deal. To figure your way around this, what you can do is ask people who have more experience. 
So just as for research papers, it's really helpful to find somebody in a clinical setting like a senior doctor who's had experience in presenting conferences and getting involved with research who can give you advice about which conference would be a good fit for your research paper. It's particularly helpful if you've already got your eye on a certain specialty and you find a doctor in that said specialty to ask them what type of conferences are well looked upon in that certain area. And of course, another really important thing is cost and the priority of that in your filtering process really depends on whether you're going to be able to get that fully funded or if you will have to cover the cost yourself. So let's talk about funding. In my opinion, your university is by far the easiest way to get funding for your student conference. Most universities, at the very least in the UK, will have a certain number of bursaries and scholarships specifically for research purposes. I've noticed that they can be difficult to find and are usually buried under subsections of subsections on the website somewhere. So you really need to take your time and go through what the options available are and maybe even contact the bursary or finance department of your university to find out if they have certain bursaries or funding for this type of project. Sure enough, at my university, uh, there were a couple of different options. Some of the bursaries just covered your travel cost, others focused on more national conferences and just paid for the cost of the conference. So there are different options that you can look at. That was the way that my colleagues and I were able to get the entirety of our conference covered from the cost of travel to accommodation and the cost of the actual conference as well. Now, if this plan doesn't work out, there are different external bodies that provide different scholarships for students of certain backgrounds or students with financial difficulties. So there are a lot of different options available. I found that they can be harder to get and the application process takes more time. So option A I think is still more ideal if it is a possibility for you. If all of that somehow fails and you found absolutely no way to get your conference covered, then at least you can make sure you pay the cheapest price. If you've got a particular conference in mind, go onto their website as early as you possibly can. They will typically always have an early bird ticket and that could be a lot cheaper than the final price. So if you're going to fund it yourself, make sure at least that you get yourself the early bird version and pay the cheapest possible price for your tickets. You've now found your conference and hopefully have found funding for it as well. We now get to the point where you need to submit an abstract. Now don't worry, this is not your whole research paper, it's not the whole poster. You'll have a couple of weeks or months at least to do that. Think of the abstract as a very brief skeleton of your research paper and you'll see that the structure is always very similar. So have a look at different examples examples online to look at the typical format and usually you'll find that it addresses a problem and what the research paper is going to be about, specific interventions that you've done or key bullet points and your final remarks as well as any discussion points. Now of course depending on whether you're presenting a case study or an audit this will be slightly different but it's always a very brief summary but remember the key point which is what is your paper actually bringing that's interesting or new or of value. This should definitely take you less than a couple of hours and hopefully you can submit and be done with that part. Assuming that your abstract has been accepted, you can now focus on prepping a poster presentation. Different conferences will require different formats and especially now with COVID, a lot of conferences are going online. So they may request a digital poster instead of an actual printed one. Either way, as with most things, the format and design is going to be pretty similar across the board. I'm not going to go too in depth in this video because this is not about how to design a perfect poster, but just a few points pick a software that you're comfortable with even if it's PowerPoint presentation I would suggest looking at different winning posters to see what a good design looks like so a poster is meant to convey the information that you want to transfer to a person but in a very appealing way so go back to the basics it's really that simple you want to make sure that you're using the same font the same color the same sizing and that you've got appropriate diagrams and pictures that help convey the message be careful not having too much text on your poster think of the spacing and be mindful of color contrast. You can always run it by one of your colleagues or a senior doctor in the hospital who has experience with presenting just for a few pointers to make sure you're on the right track. We now get to the conference day, so hopefully you've made it all this way, unscathed and ready to present your paper. Be proud of yourself and enjoy the fact that you've made it to a conference. Try and network if you can, look at different research projects that you find interesting and when it comes to presenting your own poster, just keep it simple. Make sure you smile, maintain eye contact and transmit the key messages of your paper and what makes it so relevant. So there you have it. Those are the steps that I use to be able to present at an international conference fully funded. I hope you found this useful and if you have any questions, drop them down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.